Hi, it's Matt, and today I'm here to tell you about how I use Anthropic and show you my scaffolding for taking artifacts that Anthropic generates, that Claude generates, and moving them locally where I can continue to edit and iterate on that code. And it'll be a really sim simple, really quick tutorial. I'm going to show you how to install the Shatzian UI library, which is a popular UI that Anthropics tends to bias, as well as configure a Vite React project, a very simple way to get JavaScript apps running using React. So if you prompt Claude for something like create a simple to-do app, it's going to give you an artifact that works. And Claude is really hyper-optimized for this use case, and it's really good at doing that. But if we dig into this and we see what this is using, we can see it's using React. It's importing some libraries here from Lucid React to create a to-do app, to app. So my new to do and if i click add it looks nice like okay the, the ui could be better but you know it has it's something that works and that's actually really impressive now i'm gonna prompt claude again and i'm gonna say using shad cn ui create a beautiful beautifully designed to do app and then while that's running we're gonna pop over to shad cn ui and we'll talk about what it is it's a set of components that uses react to basically give you pre-configured code for really nice like components, right? So like a button, right? I can click this button, I can engage with it. And we're gonna configure this library to plug into Anthropic so that when you get output that looks like this, you'll be able to run it locally. And Anthropic, I've noticed, favors Chad CNUI. So if you see these like imports from at components, a lot of times that's the library it's using by default. So I'm gonna show you how to get, get this working locally. So basically navigate to the folder that you'd like to get started in. This assumes you have NPM installed and I'm gonna run NPM create create Vite at latest, my new app, dash dash, dash dash template, React. This is gonna scaffold a new Vite project in my new app. So now I'm gonna do a CD into my new app and I'm gonna run my code editor. I'm using cursor here. So you can see now we have a source directory, we have assets, we have our app.jsx, which is the main file, and an index.css, which is the main CSS file. I'm gonna keep this over the side here, and now we're gonna go through the Shad CNUI installation. The instructions are for TypeScript. I'm using JavaScript here because that's simple and I can get going a bit faster. I'll show a terminal so we can do this all on the same pane. The first thing you have to do is this command which just literally installs the libraries. That is all the code. We'll trash that, we'll just get a new terminal. The first thing you have to do is actually install some libraries. So this is gonna install Tailwind, it's gonna install a few other essential libraries. Tailwind is another way of managing components with CSS of defining styling with very simple uh, CSS instructions. It's actually pretty great. That's easy. The next part is that we have to edit the tsconfig JSON file. Now, we're using JavaScript, so there is no tsconfig file. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a jsconfig.json. Clever, right? And then we really only need this compiler options argument. So I'm gonna create a new dictionary paste that in. We have some syntax errors. I might actually not need that. Oh, so this needs to be JSON, not JS. My bad. So I'm going to add these compiler options, which is basically configuring the paths that we need for this library. Next, tsconfig.app.json. This one is going to be in, actually, this is the same thing where we actually don't need to do this. Next, we need to update the eat config, or actually, except for anything that has to do with TypeScript. So this is actually the same. So I'm gonna paste this in here and save, and we should be all set there. And now we can run the Shad CN UI CLI. So I'm gonna run this command, and this is gonna actually install the components. Would you like to use TypeScript? No, we'll use the default style slate, and then our global CSS file is gonna be in source slash index.css. Yep, we do wanna use CSS variables. We're not using a custom Tailwind prefix, and then you can leave the Tailwind configuration settings as well as the import alias and utilities alias. Finally, React server components is no, and then you type yes, y to proceed. And so it just wrote basically this components.json file, and that's gonna have all of our options in it. And it did modify a few other files. So now we have all of this plugged together, right? We still have our default app in though. So if I go to, if I go to Claude, we take a look at what we just developed, our new to-do app. The code, let's take a look at what we're using here, right? We're using at components slash UI, we're using Lucid React, and the exact components that we're using are input, button, card, and alert. So for each of those, I'm gonna run an NPX, Shad CN UI latest, add, we'll go input, and it's gonna add the components for the input. Note that that's going in the components folder, UI, input, and then we can do the same thing, basically, 
for card, you can do the same thing for button, and for alert. So now we have all of those components installed, and really this is just JavaScript that defines in Tailwind, if you're familiar, how the app's gonna work. Now we have everything configured. So I'm gonna copy and paste this into app.jsx, and I'm gonna run an npm run dev. So now we have our app at localhost, and we have a working to do app. So just like that, you can take the output of Claude artifacts and get them running locally. Now from here, right, I could prompt Claude more, I could edit this code, you know, it's gonna populate in real time because Vite does have hot reloading. And then, you know, eventually, you know, if I want to add an, maybe an emoji here, there you go. And then eventually I could take this, package it up and deploy it with my framework of choice. But this is actually a really efficient method. It's a method that I've found works really well for going from artifacts to code. Again, I'm Matt, that's been my process for how I'm using artifacts along with my local environment to build front-end applications. It's worked really well and I've built a few examples already. Follow along for more tips and tricks, more AI-based coding tutorials. Until next time, peace.